Okay, so today what we're going to try to do is uh, do an overview of some very simple um, or, uh, introductory Docker commands. Um, these are commands that I've picked up along the way as I've been using more Docker and Podman on Fedora. And there are things that I just wish I had known uh, when I was first getting Docker. Because um, uh, initially I was essentially blindly following what the internet told me. Uh, and slowly learning from there, but I decided that um, it might be good to just go over some of the useful commands uh, just to give new time users to the platform uh, a bit of a heads up of sort of how it works and what the, um, the basic usage is. Um, for Docker, uh, if you haven't installed, you can uh, of course always use the help command to get a list of all the available commands that go on Docker. And then Docker has lots of important subcommands. Um, for example, say uh, if you wanted to do Docker run, which is what you use to create and um, start a container, run a command in a new container. So this is how you how you run run the command to to get it um, started. Uh, and if you did something like Docker run help, uh, run itself also has its own its own set of uh, help list and commands uh, that go that go with it. So always uh, it's always a good place to start when you're first learning uh, is to to read through the information using help. Uh, and then of course you can also uh, use command pages and things like that uh, to get started. Uh, for the install, um, just to save time, Docker is already installed on this machine. This is uh, a Linux Mint box, uh, a little bit of an older one. Um, but the, the subset is Ubuntu. So if you wanted to know how to install it, you can just go to the uh, Docker page, uh, install based on the Ubuntu platform. And uh, for this version, uh, and we can see the kernel version here, um, this is running uh, 4.15, so a bit of an older kernel. Uh, but the base uh, in Ubuntu uh, is based on Bionic. So when we install it, we want to install the Docker versus based on the uh, Ubuntu Bionic repository. So uh, we didn't have any old versions, so you didn't need to do that. Um, what you need to do is, uh, as you always, just start start with an update just to get the latest refresh of your repositories. Um, then you want to make sure that you have curl and these um, CA certifications uh, installed. So something that uh, Docker recommends as well as this LSP release. Um, this may or may not be needed, and I'll go into that in a minute. Then you want to add the official GP, GPGP. Essentially, you just can copy these commands if you are, are trusting. Uh, copy, copy the commands and paste them into the, your shell. Um, and then this is the part that's um, important to get the repository uh, down. Uh, now, what this does is this uh, dollar sign lsb release dash cs what that does is it outputs uh, in your terminal the, uh, the the base release or sort of the the standard repo uh, for for this release and what that does is it sort of tries to map that to these docker bases up top now what that's going to throw an error on is uh, because I'm using Linux mint uh, if say I run lsb release dash cs is going to come up with Tara. Now Tara is not one of the officially supported uh, versions. So what you want to do is in this case is you can copy this whole command. You control shift V. Oops, I copied with the of that. Copied too much. Copy this, Control Shift V, and we haven't entered it yet. Uh, and what you can do is, instead of running this, you can simply type Bionic, uh, and that'll add it to the list. Then what you can do is uh, a sudo apt update, um, and what you want to look for is this right here. Just download that Docker Linux Ubuntu bionic in release okay and then from there what you'll be able to see is if you do apt 
search Docker. What the tutorial down here tells you to do is you want to install Docker C, Docker C, CLI, and uh, containered.io. So we want to, if we did an app search for Docker, we want to make sure that we can see the CE, CE, CLI, uh, and that containered.io uh, um, in the list. Um, now I've, I've already installed it so I can confirm this works. Um, but that's just a, a tiny little trick if, if you're using a non uh, LTS version of, of Ubuntu. Um, or a, non, a separate distro which still leverages the, the Ubuntu the Ubuntu base. So one little trick there. Now in terms of getting started with Docker, um, one thing that we can do, uh, and they mention here in the documentation, is you can do is uh, sudo docker run hello world. So we can get started by doing that. sudo docker run hello world. It says hello from Docker. Cool. Um, it also gives you another command uh, to create a little Ubuntu container. Okay. So uh, normally this wouldn't pop up this fast if this is your first install. Uh, and the reason being is that it needs to have the container image. Uh, Docker has what's called a Docker hub. Oops. That's going off my screen, right? There we go. And inside the Docker Hub, uh, there's a whole li large list of containers and things that you can you can search for. Say I wanted to build a lamp stack. There's all sorts of different kinds of lamp stacks and things that I can choose and build from. So when you're using Docker, you can also search with Docker. Um, say I want to search for a lamp. Docker does require you to run as root. To do a lot of uh, basic tasks, so you need to add the sudo in front of it a lot of times. Uh, and here you can also in the command line you can see there's all sorts of these kind of lamp stacks. And because Docker by default is going to search through its hub, so you'll be able to see uh, this information there as well. Okay. Now uh, let's say we we go with the recommendation uh, from the hello world command, uh, and we want to start. You went through bash. Now I've already pulled this image down um, previously, so I can also show you uh, Docker image list. This is going to give us the list of images that we already have installed on this machine. So I have the Ubuntu image already and the Hello World. Um, it also shows you the last time it was created, and this is based on when the container image itself was created. So not necessarily when you download it. But when the container image was created, because this is showing uh, five weeks ago, which is the late of their Ubuntu or their standard Ubuntu uh, image, uh, two months ago for their Hello World uh, image, um, and this is definitely not not when I installed these, because I uh, I just put these in today. Now uh, we can do a, a Docker run, but rather than following this exact command that they just spit out, which is run dash it Ubuntu bash. The run dash it, what this is going to do is let you interact, um, with the, with the instance or with the container. So it'll put you right into the, uh, the service that you call. Ubuntu right here, this is the image that we have. Okay. So we're saying we want to run this image. We want to, uh, go inside of it so that we can manipulate or, or see the output. And then the service or the command that we run. Uh, it's going to be bash. So we want to run the bash service uh, in Ubuntu. So that way we can bring up the shell. All containers, when you first create them, you need to specify both the image and then also the service um, that they're going to run. Okay. Now, when we do the, uh, the docker uh, run dash it Ubuntu bash, this will work. Uh, but one thing that I want to do is I want to name the container. So you can give it a name flag and equal sign, and we can just call it Ubuntu Bash. And what that's going to do is uh, let us specify what we want to call the container. So it becomes a little bit easier for us to remember the name of the container uh, in the future. So we'll do that. There we are. It started. Uh, and the reason that was so fast is because we didn't have to pull a new image down. We already had the latest image. Now inside of here, we're essentially in a separate um, uh, 
shell. We're in a, an isolated device. It's not a full on virtual machine. Uh, we talked a little bit about that in the previous video about setting up a LAMP stack in Docker. Um, but it is uh, a fully independent environment. Uh, and we can see if we just do ls home ls, there's nothing there. Uh, if we go back to our page over here, this ls, you can see, yeah, this is the, uh, the home of uh, this virtual machine that I'm running in right now. From here, uh, we could do things like make directory. So we can just call it like a test directory. ls, there's test. Um, we can also try to create a document. Um, and by creating a document, we can use nano. Oh, except nano, nano doesn't exist. Now, obviously, if we're in this environment, we do have nano. Don't have the permission. It's home. It's pseudo. Um, but essentially, you can see there's already a difference. So the package is available, the commands available. They're all different because they're different environments. Now we can run an update on this uh, container um, so that we can get access to the latest packages. You'll also notice that this is uh, calling for vocal which is uh, should be Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, whereas here, if I ran the same command, if I type correctly, you'll see that uh, we're calling through uh, Tara and Linux Mint, and then the um, Bionic is the, the Ubuntu version. So completely different Ubuntu versions both running on the same on the same system. Um, now we can do an app search for Nano. If we scroll up a bit, see here, small friendly text editor. So we'll run the command uh, apt install Nano. There we go. Now if we run nano, it's working. Uh, now inside the container, pretty much all containers, the container itself is run as root. It's a root of the container. Um, so you do need to be a little bit careful what you're doing, especially if you care about the contents of the container. Uh, the nice thing is that in general, containers are easy to uh, migrate from machine to machine because you can spin them up and spin them down. Um, and generally they're not super designed to have long-term data in them. Although uh, what we'll see in a minute is uh, because we named the container uh, and we're working off the same container's name, um, the containers will actually always be there. They'll always be present unless you remove them. So they are uh, persistent uh, in that regards. So what we can do right now is we can exit. Just control D or type exit and just like in a shell, you'll exit out of it. Uh, now we can always check to see what containers are running. If we do uh, sudo docker ps, okay, because we exited the previous instance of the Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu bash, um, it's not running. If we want to see all the list of containers that we have, sudo docker ps a, uh, so we can see we have our two containers. One is hello world, one is uh, Ubuntu Bash. Um, if we wanted to start up our Ubuntu Bash container again, all we have to do is sudo docker start Ubuntu Bash. Okay, now we run sudo docker ds again. Okay, let's see it's running. Now say we want to go back into the container. We want to go back and, and access it again. Uh, there's a command called exec. So sudo docker exec. Again, dash it to bring it up in our terminal. Um, and then Ubuntu bash. And then we need to specify what service or how we want to interact with it if you do bash, right? Um, 
So we get in there and we're back. And you can see the files that we created are still there. Text. Type in some more text. So all of that's working. Okay. Now we can exit again. Um, and this time when we exit it, let me just double check. Uh, because we started it separately, um, it should still be running. And it is. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing about the, the container. When you first do the run command, because you're running it and starting it with the IT variable in the beginning, uh, as soon as you exit it, then the, the command the command stops. Uh, but if you start it again, it kinda, it's kind of like it starts it in the background. So the Docker container, when it gets started the, the second time, when you restart it, uh, it can still run even if you exit out of it. Because when you went into it and when you exited it, uh, you were doing it via the exec. Uh, command and we can see a little bit more information about what exec does just by typing help so you can see uh, run a command in a running container so this is how you can get into the container and run and run different commands all right um, now say uh, what would happen if we reran the run command right so we do docker run dash it name we're going to say maybe ubuntu 2 okay we're giving a separate name or maybe we don't define the name and we're still running the same image ubuntu bash running it and here we are but if you go to home you'll notice there's nothing there uh, the other thing is if we try to run nano command's not found because this is already a separate environment. Uh, by rerunning the run command, um, run always is a, a new creation or a new, a new container. So if we exit out of this, um, and we do sudo docker ts-a, what you'll see is there are now two Ubuntu images or two Ubuntu containers. They have different IDs, which is a unique, unique ID that Docker assigns to these, um, containers. Uh, and they also have different names. So this name, because we didn't define it, um, became Reverend Liskoff. So uh, these are the names that Docker assigns automatically. Um, uh, or Pensive Keller, again. Uh, just kind of um, sort of silly names of smart people. Um, and that's what it automatically gets assigned, unless you specify using a name that I know I want to call it this. Uh, now, if we don't want that container, that was a mistake or something, we didn't really want it, we can always go through and we can delete it. Just remove and then easily just grab the name, control shift C, control shift V, remove. It prints the name again just to show that it, it took action. Uh, and if we ran the PS-A, you see that container is gone. Uh, again, if we want to see the images, we didn't create any additional images. Uh, so even if we have multiple containers, they share the same images. Uh, and essentially what they do is they're working off of uh, Linux namespaces to create different environments that, that you can then work on, but based on the same image. So if you have Docker images, or not images, image list, uh, you can still see our our Ubuntu and Hello World containers are still there. So that was just like a very uh, brief run, uh, a run through of Docker. Um, I cover a lot more uh, detailed commands um, for setting up an, a LAMP stack using the pure Docker commands, not Docker Compose. Um, we actually don't have Docker Compose on this computer. Um, so you, you would need to install it, which is perfectly doable. You can definitely install it. Um, but you don't necessarily need Docker Compose. It depends on how you want to use your, uh, set up your containers and how you want to manage them. Docker Compose is really handy, uh, but doesn't necessarily need to be there, uh, if you don't want to. You can just run everything as like a single run command to set up all, all the information that you want in, in your container. Um, Docker Compose is pretty handy, uh, because it auto creates a network. So that you don't have to manually set up a network and then tie the network to all the different containers so that they can see each other. Um, if you're using Docker command, you do need to do like a create network and things like that. I have a, a tutorial in the blog um, 
that's not about Docker, it's about Podman. Uh, but Podman and Docker commands, uh, everything that we went through here are essentially the same. You just swipe out the word uh, Docker for Podman, um, and all of these commands should also still work exactly the same, exactly as expected. So I'll also link that um, in the, the blog post itself. Uh, so for anyone who wants to reference that a little bit more can also uh, go read through those steps as well. Um, yeah, so that's just uh, getting your feet wet with Docker. I hope it's helpful, um, and I hope that people have a really good experience. Uh, again, one of the nice things about Docker is you can set up different environments, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on a bare metal hardware. So this whole machine that I'm running here is inside a VM, but I can still create containers. I can still uh, have separate virtual environments within a virtual machine. So it's, it's one of probably the most powerful things about Docker. It's, it's really cool. So uh, I hope everyone uh, has a good time with it. Hope this is helpful. And thank you very much.